Hello, it's Phil Thatch and I'm here with Heather and we're at Standard for Gap Marsh or near Standard for Gap Marsh. And uh, I learned that these bluebird houses were put up by the Riverwalk Bird Club. And I also learned from David Aborn, a bird scientist who is from our area, that this box up here in the frame now is actually an American kestrel box. But it is filled now with great crested flycatchers and I learned from my friend Forrest uh, a technique to capture them in flight, which Heather and I didn't even try last time. Uh, we are just focusing on the birdhouse and waiting for the flycatchers to fly in and then shooting. We're shooting in 30 frames per second mode, which we never do. We always are in 15, and lately I've been in the even slower version than that. But as you can see, we're set up here on this grassy knoll, for lack of a better word. Uh, with our cameras and we're pointing right at the birdhouse and the reason why we came up here is because the background is trees from up here instead of sky so that makes our shots better and every once in a while one of the birds will come flying in with some prey in its mouth to feed the youngsters. Here's two examples of really good shots that Heather made right out of the box and this is what we were looking for a great crested flycatcher flying in with really interesting wing positions and you can see prey in their mouth that they're bringing to the young inside the nest. Okay so I've moved across the street. I like this angle better. Heather's still over across the street on the grassy knoll and we're talking to each other. We have our phones on and we're on speaker. Say hi Heather. Hi. See so we can communicate and kind of tell each other when the birds are coming and I've gone to shooting at F10 to try to get more depth of field because I'm focusing on the birdhouse and the bird is not going to be exactly at the birdhouse. It's going to be pretty close, but it's not, the critical focus is not going to be there. So a little bit more depth of field will help. And the background, those trees is way away, yards and yards away, maybe even a hundred yards further away than the birdhouse. So it's still, it's still plenty bokeified. Heather says one's coming in. No deer. Oh, she said a deer's coming across. Yeah, there's been deer uh, scampering across the back of this field and one of them is coming closer to us, but uh, we're set up for the birds, so we're not gonna worry about the deer. Now it's turned around and scampering back into the woods. Here's a shot of mine and nowhere near as good as Heather's, I know, but it is interesting because it has a praying mantis in its mouth that it brought to feed the youngsters in the nest. It looks like the shot from across the street is better than the grassy knoll shot. So Heather's decided to move over here with me the tricky part though, in order to have no uh, sky in your shot, you have to have your tripod really high. I got sky off too. And Heather is, uh, Heather is vertically challenged, so it's gonna be tricky for her. Now, if you move back up the hill some, it'll be better. Anyway, we're, we're working on this. Here's a couple more of Heather's shots of the great crested fly catcher bringing in a dragonfly this time, really beautiful. And I think both of these were probably in the same sequence. She really bagged it well this time. And I love the character of this old kestrel house with all the lichens growing on it. We're discovering that this technique is hard. You know, uh, the, at 30 frames per second, the buffer on this camera is only like a second and a half, which is why we usually shoot 15 frames per second. So we'll have a longer buffer. There's a pretty good area of the shot. You know, we're not getting super close up shots of these birds. We got the birdhouse in a, in a pretty good bit of space around the birdhouse, but the amount of time that the bird is in that space is just a fraction of a second. So if you start shooting too early, you'll hit the buffer before you, the bird's in the frame. And if you wait until the bird's in the frame, then you've probably missed it. So uh, I guess pre-capture would be something good to try here, but we're not doing that. We're, we're just trying to catch it. And what I've been doing is, is hitting the shutter just maybe a half a second or so before the bird comes into the frame and then I've got a full second of shots and by that time it's in the birdhouse. Here's a couple more of Heather's shots and of course you can always tell the Heather's shots are Heather's because they say Heather Boyd in the bottom right but she did a really nice job again capturing beautiful wing positions of the great crested flycatchers flying into the nest. Cooperation in bird photography is really cool. Uh, I've been to this place many, many times, but I wouldn't have come to this place if it weren't for my friend Forrest saying, hey, Phil, there's some really good killdeer opportunity 
here. So I came here to see the kill deer, and while I was here, I found these great crested flycatchers, and then I told Forrest about it. Forrest comes back and develops this technique of photographing them in flight coming into the house and tells me about it. And so if it weren't for all that cooperation, I wouldn't be here getting these great crested flycatcher shots today. Here's one of my shots of the flycatcher as it's coming in. This time it's carrying a dragonfly. And of course the male and the female were both doing this. Here's one of Heather's shots. It's bringing, I'm not sure what that is, maybe a worm of some sort, caterpillar. And the next up is another one of my shots with a dragonfly. This may be my favorite of my shots of the entire day, this one right here. If the birds fly in parallel with the birdhouse in terms of the focal plane, then we're getting them nice and sharp. But if they fly this way, coming in, they're not as sharp. And I'm not sure if any of these are critically sharp. You know, Heather was comparing the sharpness of her photos to our point blank range um, in the blind on the back porch from 10 feet away and a bird not moving. It's, it's never gonna be that sharp but we're trying to get them pretty close. Here are a couple more of my shots. And of course, if you look at it, it's not critically sharp. It's pretty sharp, but the focus point is actually on the birdhouse. And here's another example of that as well. And on this one, the bird's even a little bit further away from the birdhouse than the last one. So it's not as sharp as the one before. Okay, we're starting to get the hang of this now. I'm finding that at 30 frames per second, I can get about seven shots during a burst that are in the frame and not cut off as it's coming into the frame and not cut off by the birdhouse. And every once in a while, we'll catch them with the orchestra conductor. Uh, I don't know if I've got, if I'm showing you that right. Where they both their hands, where both their hands are up like this. And while I'm making this video clip, Heather informed me that the bird just flew in. So we're gonna get back to work. But here's our setup. There's my camera and Heather's a little shorter than me. So she's a little bit further back up the hill so we can both be getting this thing. I thought I would try something a little bit different. What I'm doing now is showing you all of the photographs that I made that had a bird in them. These are non-edited at all other than just putting my watermark. You can see tons of noise in these shots and you can also see the uh, wobbles of electronic shutter, rolling shutter distortion that Canon cameras are famous for except for the R3. And look at this one, the bird's completely out of focus and it's getting closer and coming into focus as it gets into the focus plane. But I thought I would show you all of these. These are 30 frames per second, and I'm showing them to you for four tenths of a second. So this is like super ultra slow motion, and I'll let you listen to some music while you enjoy the rest of these shots. <laughs> Well, it's Father's Day, and best I can tell, my daughter has already arrived at the house, so we're going to go eat lunch. And Heather and I appreciate you joining us for this video. Thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up if you like the content. Thanks to Forrest for uh, kind of helping me with this technique. And thanks to you for watching. Bye-bye.